we, we spoke about men shaving. We haven't spoken about women's hair removal as well through Venus. That has been one of the big growth vectors for you. For how long does it continue to grow faster than the men's category? And what is the opportunity size there? Look, our business on, um, on Venus has grown by almost 10x in the last 10 years. Hmm. Okay. And we still think we have a huge runway of growth in that particular segment. What's your revenue share difference right now between Gillette and Venus, if one was to look at it? I mean, what proportion is it? Today, I would say Venus accounts for about 10% of our total revenues of, uh, of, of Gillette, total Gillette. But it's growing at least 10 points faster than, uh, than our overall Gillette business. Not Just to be clear, our overall Gillette business in itself is growing well, and we're pretty pleased with that. But Venus in, in particular is actually growing 10 points faster than that. But the runway for growth, again, just be, just if you go back and take a look at, a lot is changing. Consumers yes. are looking for solutions which are not messy, which, are, which can be done on the go, uh, and which leave a pain-free uh, smoothness, right? And that's, that's the proposition that the consumers have accepted. And, you know, let's talk about the Oral-B vertical and the appliances vertical. What are you doing to drive penetration in this category and in that drive up your market share too? Look, I think Oral-B is the brand of toothbrush which is the most recommended by dentists, by dentists. here in India. Right? Every oral care company says that, that theirs is the most recommended <laughs> brand. We actually make the claim as well in uh, okay. this thing, right? So, uh, so, that's, so that's one, which is, you know, making sure that oral hygiene is a priority and consumers have the right set of habits to drive uh, oral hygiene habit. What is the proportion of power and what is the proportion of normal power? Power at this point in time is relatively small, but it's the fastest growing segment in our oral, oral care uh, business. We're again very happy with how the new habits are being formed and how the form conversion is actually happening here in India. The perception of PNG is that of an urban high-end company as against some other competitors that you have, which would be perhaps mass uh, sachetization sort of highly distributed in rural India sort of uh, positioning that they have. How do you, you know, respond to allegations of those? <laughs> I don't know whether it's an allegation or not. Let me just put some facts on the table, yeah. right? First of all, you know, if I look at our distribution footprint, uh, PNG brands are available. Our footprint goes right up to almost 6 million stores. Okay. Okay. Our direct footprint is more than two and a half million stores. Incredible. Okay. At two and a half million and at six million, I don't think we would be called an urban niche <laughs> in, uh, by any stretch of imagination. So, uh, yeah, rural is a sizable part of our business. Uh, in, in cases like, in categories like Bix, for example, it accounts for almost half of our, half of our volumes uh, come from rural. So we are, and if you go back and look at our equity in, in rur in, amongst rural consumers, it's pretty strong among many of our brands. So the reason why a lot of people don't know about all these things is because a large part of your business is still unlisted. And even in the listed businesses that you have, a global parent has three listed companies in India. I'm sure you would see synergies in clubbing all of them and perhaps, you know, giving one listed entity to investors. Have you thought about that? Actually, we are, we are quite happy with the way we are structured yeah. in uh, this thing. I think, you know, uh, from a company standpoint, you know, if I look at all the four companies that we have, all the four companies have created value for all the stakeholders that we have. The company is mm. quite happy with the arrangement that we have at this point in time. In uh, the home care and hair care businesses, how has your market share trended over the last few yeah. years? Have you gained market share? Mm. Our bigger, biggest focus right now is we believe that if you put the focus on category growth through integrated growth strategy, that gets you more sustainable results than getting you know, focused on just the market, just share. The market share. I'll take Whisper as an example, right. okay? Uh, 20 years ago, between tw over 20 years, our Whisper market share has been kind of almost around the same. Yeah. Okay, we are the market leaders and we own a substantial part of the market. And the market shares have been around the same. But if you go back and look at what has what we've accomplished over a 20-year period, we use, even we celebrate, we took 12 or 13 years to celebrate getting to 24 crore bad sales in a year, okay? And from there, we've gone from 24 crores to 480 crores, with the market share being almost the same. So you're just growing the pie growing as, the pie. as much as so you much can. There's so much of runway to grow the pie, right? So that's why we don't sweat too much about, you know, 
where where we are on our market share but we sp spend a lot of time and most of our reviews are all focused on you know are you executing the strategy well and is that translating into acceleration of category growth is that yeah you have over a thousand crores of cash on your books as well is inorganic a part of your <coughs> growth strategy what are your thoughts on that we constantly keep looking at the company global company as such constantly keeps looking at what are the various ways in which we can continue to grow both organically and inorganically but i have to be very honest on that one uh, mangalam that i think again you know the runway that we have within our existing categories and with our existing brands is pretty large to and the runway to create value is pretty large are you comfortable with where your margins are right now or do you believe there is there is some room for improvement back to the peak levels you know we look at success across revenue growth across margin expansion yes and across uh, uh, bottom line growth right so uh, at least over the last call it 5 7 years you know we've been able to drive balanced growth on the total business that we have and we're pretty pleased with you know where we are headed on both top and bottom line digital the investments that everyone's talking about in ml artificial intelligence how has that helped you you know grow or optimize your sales mix and also perhaps take you to a wider base of audience most yes. fmcg the mantra really is add more distributors and keep that's what drives up uh, dri th th that's what drives up your presence in the market right in india we work with 30 distributors and this model has been on for the last 25 years wow the industry may be anywhere upwards of 2000 hmm. we have 30 distributors okay all of them have one standardized erp okay and the calls that they make the data that gets generated from that is a huge source through which we are able to then curate you know what kind of skews to sell mm. buy store how to sell them what kind of promotion bundles to sell at a store level simply because we have the hardware in place where we have very few distributors a common erp huge amount of data with which we can then you know then create very intelligent selling in our in our total machine so up until now if you could give us a number as to you know this is what uh, in terms of incremental sales or incremental margins are move towards digital and ai has brought us would you be able to i would say i would attribute to at least a third of our growth come and a third of our product or even more than a third of our productivity coming from all the digital tools and all the digital capabilities that we have created and you are still a long way from optimizing the overall utilization of this right absolutely absolutely i think we have we've invested a lot of resources invested a lot of cutting edge uh, you know algorithms into this and we believe that uh, there is a still a long runway of driving both in uh, accelerated top line and driving productivity what proportion <laughs> of your uh, products are imported from outside of india and how many of them are manufactured in india what are your plans there i think there? Uh, more than 95% of our business is manufactured here in india i think the number is closer to 97% of our business of the of the sales that we have here in india are produced in india and there is opportunity for you to export from india as well or you want to make it in india and sell it in india itself yeah we currently already export from india right into different parts of the world but we are also making india a, ma a massive manufacturing hub if you recall in about about 6 months ago hmm. we uh, uh, we talked about an investment of about 2000, 2000 crores for a 100% export oriented unit yes for healthcare in in gujarat right we believe that you know uh, that is just a starting point of of the kind of things that we can do in india uh, you know as manufacturing becomes attractive here in india all right we've spoken a lot of uh, serious business stuff let's talk about some fun stuff uh, what does lv stand for by the way l now lv actually stands for lalgudi viswanathan okay okay but most people know me as lv whether it was college school png outside I don't think anyone knows my actual name at all. <laughs> <laughs> Now we do. Uh, a company that you admire outside of PNG would be what? Look, I admire all our peers here yeah. in, uh, in in India, right? I think uh, they have a lot of strength. There's a lot to learn, and we have the humility to learn from our peers. What comes to your mind when I say quick commerce? Uh, it's uh, from a business standpoint. I think it's it's been a it's been a tremendous. change that we have seen on the on the business both on the digital commerce side and consumer adoption 
initially there was a lot of skepticism about the business model yeah. on this but i think the quick commerce players and us and us as suppliers are also learning on on various aspects so i believe double digit of your revenues comes in from e-commerce okay. how much of that would be quick commerce yes. now we are actually starting to see a large part of our digital commerce business coming from quick commerce i can't share the the numbers but a large part of our digital commerce business comes from uh, quick commerce what comes to your mind when i say the png of 2030 png of 2030 will continue to be an important fmcg company and a very responsible corporate response uh, very responsible one at that and if you had to end this conversation with one of the png product tag lines what would it be the best the consumer can get it's borrowing from the tag line of gillet uh, the best that the man can get incredible thank <laughs> you lvb this was great thank you thank you, thank you.